Hey everybody, Coach Dan from The Run Experience here today with your five top tips for how to run properly for beginners. If you do all five of these things, you're gonna have a built-in warm-up, some strength exercises, and your running form will get better, I promise. Tip number one is posture. Look, I know maybe you've got a desk job and you're hunched over at that keyboard all day, or you're just praying to the gods of your phone. Maybe it's the opposite of that, and you've got your back arch a little bit too much during the day. All of these things are problems and they can translate over into your running. And so the first thing I want you to do to start running better is to think about that posture when you're not running. Maybe it's at a red light. Maybe it's at the dinner table with your family. I don't know. You pick the time that works best for you to think about your posture. What I want you to do then is stand up, shoulders, back. Think of a piece of alignment here. Ears, shoulder, hips, knees, ankles. Get them all lined up. Look, I don't want you to be robotic about it. You're not going to go through your day this way. But I do want you to spend a little bit of time every day bringing some awareness to that posture. That straight line is really, really important. The next thing I want you to do is think about your hips. Part of the problem is, you know, sometimes we're standing with our hips popped out. If you've had kids, you know, you're carrying them around on one hip all the time. You can get really used to that sort of posture. Instead, what I want you to do is think about evenly distributing weight between your feet and a little external rotation in those feet is gonna really set those hips in place. Do that, and most importantly, get that butt tight. If you do those things, your hips are gonna be in alignment and you're gonna have your posture right. If you get used to doing this when you're not Running, it becomes much easier to do it when you're running and the opposite is true if you aren't able to hold this posture when you're not running the chances of you having good running form go way way down it's just really hard to run properly if you can't stand properly first the last thing that's a really good check for posture is to do this little exercise take your middle finger and your thumb lay them here on your collarbone and stick your pointer finger straight up in the air. Where your chin aligns here is a really, it's, that's where your chin is supposed to be. So it's not too far forward, it's not too far back, you're not looking too far up or down. Right here, if you get those two fingers on your collarbones, stick that finger up and touch your chin, that's proper chin alignment while you're running. Finding that good posture is really important, but having the strength to keep it is even more so. So I've got two exercises for you now that are gonna help build the core strength you need to hold that proper posture while running for a long period of time. Lots of us can keep good running form at the very beginning of a run, but it starts to fall apart over time, and the longer you have before you start to feel that fatigue, the easier maintaining good form is gonna be. These two exercises, you're gonna to wanna to do on a yoga mat or a nice grassy spot or somewhere soft in your house with a bit of carpet, uh, because we're gonna have you lay down, one on your tummy and one on your back. They're not extreme exercises, they're very simple, but they're not easy. So, here's what I want you to do first. Root on your back with your shoulders and your head up kind of in a crunch position. Legs at 90 degrees from your hips. Most important thing here is that your lower back is rooted. The moment you start to get concave here, you get a little space in that lower back, then you've lost your form, you're doing it wrong, and you're not getting the benefit you need. Now, what I want you to do is think of your arms and legs kind of as weights for this exercise. The further they are away from your body, the more weight you're putting on the bar. In a perfect world, what you can do is get all four of your limbs out nice and wide and keep them there for 30 seconds. Now, if you find this too much, if you start to lose form, or you're just not feeling uh, like it's good for you, bring it in closer, get those arms in, maybe the legs in a little bit. That's fine, you can build up to that 30 seconds of this good wide posture. 30 seconds here is great for the core, I can feel it already. For the next exercise, it's sort of a modified Superman. I want you to get over on your tummy, and the first thing I want you to do is tighten that butt and turn on that core. I'm gonna, you're gonna do that and your hips are gonna root down a little bit. Now, sometimes when you see people do a Superman, they're way up off the ground right away from the beginning. I don't want you to do that. What instead what I want you to do is think about tightening that butt, turning on that core, and then legs and arms are just gonna come up about an inch off the ground. I could go higher, but I don't want to. For this exercise, thumbs pointed toward the skies, toes pointed just an inch or so off the ground and hold it here for 30 seconds. Those two exercises are really gonna help build the core strength you need to maintain that running posture. 
it's so important to run well over time. Your next tip is breathing. We're generally not that good at it, despite the fact that we do it all the time. Lots of us, because our posture isn't great, we tend to breathe into here, the shallow part, the top of our chest, and we're not using our diaphragms as much as we need to be to get full deep breaths. The way I want you to start thinking about breathing slightly differently, one section of this happens before you run and one section happens while you run. Before you run, I want you to get ready or sort of get used to the idea of belly breathing. If you've got time and space, just lay down to do this to try to shut out the rest of the world. It feels really nice and it's a great way to calm your central nervous system. If not, you can do this at a red light too or at your desk, whatever's gonna work best for you. What I want you to do is put one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly. Think of breathing in three stages, upper chest, mid chest, and then into that belly and take some big breaths in and out through your nose. So inhaling first through the top of your chest, then the middle, and then the belly. Do that five or six times. It's gonna calm you down and make you feel good. Also, when it comes time to run, I want you to do that nose breathing for the first two or three minutes and the last two or three minutes of your run. If you can do that, it's gonna do a whole bunch of things. One of them, the smaller canal that you're breathing through actually stimulates your diaphragm. It makes it do some work that it's not necessarily used to doing. But I want to warn you here, it doesn't necessarily feel great, especially when you start nose breathing while you're running. For some people, it can bring up some feelings of panic or anxiety. That's totally normal. You can breathe through that if you want to. Slow down your pace to bring your heart rate down and it's going to feel a lot easier. But trust me, it's worth it if you get past that first sort of negative feeling and stick with it. Some nose breathing while you run is really a good practice. Tip number four is arm swings. I know what you're thinking. You run with your legs. What do arms have to do with it? Well, actually, a lot of proper running form happens in your upper body. And if you get it right, it can make a big difference. If you get it wrong, it can also make a big difference. So there's a few things to keep in mind. And then I'm going to give you a drill to do to make you look silly at the gym, but it's worth it. First thing to keep in mind is that I don't want you to be too tense, right? I want your shoulders down and lots of fluid arm swing. You can use your arms lots. Try to think of your elbows pushing back as opposed to your hands moving forward. That's a better cue for you. And then think of your nose as the midline of your body. You don't want your arms coming across that midline. A little bit of swing toward that midline is okay, but big exaggerated motions across that midline are no good for you. You want to be able to turn this way. So I want you to see it this way. So it's your elbows go back, fists go forward and up and that's good running form. Now, how do you practice it? Well, like everything, you practice it by actually doing it. And so first thing I want you to do is just one foot forward, body's upright, butt's tight, core's turned on, and practice that motion. Sometimes people think of having a, a, like a holster, like a pocket holster or a gun or something, and you're bringing it forward. That's not a bad image for some people. Here, and then I want you to really get going 15 seconds of this as part of your warm up is great. Then you're gonna just put the other leg forward and off you go again, do the same thing. I love arm swings as a way to open up and think about running as well. And so it's really easy, just arms up and back. Gosh, I can hear junk in my shoulders clicking away already. I'm obviously not doing enough of this work. Lots of these big arm swings in both directions before you run is gonna open up your chest and bring your shoulders back and down, which is where you want them to be to get proper arm swings. We've done all the prep work. Now it's finally time to talk about our legs and how they need to do this work for us while we're running. Running form and how your feet hit the ground are really important, but it's not really what you wanna to need to think about when you're starting your running journey. Instead, you wanna think about a pulling motion with your legs. The ability to get that leg up and through quickly and efficiently with all the right muscles turned on is really important. And there's two exercises we're gonna use to, to learn to teach our bodies how to do that. And they both make great parts of your warm up as well. First one is gonna be high knees and the second one is butt kicks. Start those high knees really slow, nothing too exaggerated. Just get the feeling of your knees coming up to start. Then get your arms out at 90 degrees and make sure you can really reach up and touch those hands with your knees. Now, it's not good to high five yourself, that's not quite the same thing. When it comes time to do the butt kicks, it's the same sort of idea. So you're gonna start just normally a not very exaggerated motion thinking about your heels going back and up. And then when you're ready, hands go back and really kick them. At the start of your run, if you integrate these just for 15 or 20 meters, 
three each time, so three high knees and three butt kicks 15 meters ago, you're really moving toward good proper running form then. If you want more tips for beginners, check out this video over my shoulder. I promise it'll get you going.